Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles, a life coach and a certified consulting hypnotist. And every Saturday afternoon, usually at 2.30 Central Time, I uh, do a short five or 10 minute video on some aspect of coaching or the hypnotic arts and sciences. I'm a little bit late today as I put up under, uh, in my earlier note, we had a windstorm in Chicago area this week. It blew down my fiber optic cable. And so I've been without internet connections. The uh, tech just arrived, he arrived early. And so I had to reschedule my, uh, my, my Facebook Live video here uh, to let him have his time to work. But we're operational now, and I'm very happy about that. Today, I want to talk about the danger of hugs. That may seem rather strange, but then I'm a rather strange person. Some decades ago, there was a pop psychologist by the name of Leo Biscaglia who had this thing about giving hugs, that it was so important that everyone do that, and that this was a tremendously admirable thing to do to other people, and it gave them a sense of acceptance and so on. I hated it. His work was really popular among the members of my denomination. And uh, I would often go to conferences and I'd have all these people walking around with, I give hug buttons. And whether you wanted to be hugged or not, they would just come right up to you and grab you and put you in this sweaty hug where you could smell what they had for lunch and whether or not their deodorant was working. It was not a good thing. Now, the thing to get is that different people have different levels of personal boundaries. Some people, especially in some cultures where uh, interpersonal space is right up close, personal, like the Greek culture or the classical uh, Mideastern culture, that's not such an issue. But for someone like myself, with an Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, uh, Celtic background, interpersonal distances are out there farther. Also, a lot of people have had experiences of being physically abused, or physically bullied in childhood, and I've had that experience. As a result, my personal boundaries are out there. There are very few people I'm comfortable letting hug me. There are some, but there are few. And the if, it, if a person comes up to me and hugs me whether I want to be hugged or not, uh, I often have to check myself to avoid responding violently. I am a multiple black belt. Uh, many decades of martial arts training. And you come up to me unexpectedly, especially if I'm having a bad day, and you suddenly grab me and give me a hug, you may find yourself picking yourself up the, off the floor with a broken collarbone. That kind of thing verges into physical assault, and it's not something that one should do. Uh, the smarter people will often say, you know, may I give you a hug? That's different. You're asking permission. And provided you're willing to be to accept being told no, that's okay. But I would hate going to these conferences and all these people trying to give me hugs as if they were my long lost friend when I know full well they're not. And over time I realized as I watched them that these people were actually trying to meet their own intimacy needs due to some deficit somewhere else in their life. They weren't giving hugs to bestow acceptance on someone else. They were using it, using the hugs to give themselves a sense of pseudo acceptance, that they're being hug, engaged in a hug by another person. Uh, not a good thing to do and a very serious boundary violation. As I've often said, boundaries are hugely important for health and stability, both physical, mental, and spiritual. There is only one creature in creation that can survive without a good boundary. Even a virus has to have a protein shell. But the cancer cell alone thrives without a boundary. It is by, it is by its nature transgressional and invasive. So boundaries are important things. And aggressively giving hugs to other people who may not want them is a boundary violation. Now let me change the channel just a bit. As a consulting hypnotist, also a retired board certified chaplain, I'm a helping professional. 
there are special dangers for helping professionals in giving hugs, especially to clients. In a professional helping relationship, all touch is problematic because it can be misunderstood. The uh, hugs especially, because a hug is also, it could be a friendly and accepting gesture, but it could also be a romantic or a sexual one. And it depends on how it's being interpreted by the people engaged and you don't control that. Easily misunderstood. One of my trainers once said, whenever you're doing something in a professional setting, you always have to ask yourself, how would I be able to defend my behavior if I were on the witness stand being interrogated by a hostile attorney? So what part of your body did you press against my client's body? Uh, that could be a very difficult answer to give and not seem like you're some sort of a predator. So do you know about an A-frame hug where the rest of the body doesn't touch? And why did you not do that to my client? And on and on and it goes. It becomes very easy to cast a, a shadow over uh, the interaction. So it's best to just avoid the possibility. Now, there are some forms of hypnotism that do use touch, not hugs, but they use touch. Although I've seen some techniques where the person is thrown forward into the hypnotist's arms, uh, which approximates to a hug. If you are going to use techniques that involve touch, you should have a waiver in your client bill of rights. The wording that I've seen that I think uh, holds up is to say something along the lines of, my style of hypnotism may occasionally require light touch to non-intimate parts of the body, such as hands, arms, shoulders, or forehead. The purpose of this touch is instructional. By signing this document prior to beginning our professional relationship, you explicitly give consent for these techniques to be used. But that would be a good CYA kind of uh, thing to have in your client bill of rights although you still have to worry if you're involved with touch. Um, and also there's another issue. If you're touching a client, some people can come back and say you're practicing chiropractic uh, massage therapy or, or something like that. And again, it just creates an additional confound that you don't need in your hypnotism practice uh, when there are other techniques that would achieve the same result without having the risk. In a helping relationship, there is no absolutely safe form of touch. Even shaking hands can be a problem. All we have are low-risk forms of touch, like shaking hands, because that's socially acceptable, uh, to high-risk forms of touch, and that would be the, the full-body hug. So it's something that you really want to think through about installing in your practice or not. And in your personal life, I would appreciate it, if you would take seriously my concern expressed earlier, people have different levels of physical boundary and you're not doing them any favor if you step over that boundary. It may feel good to you, but you don't know how it's going to feel to them and it may be highly objectionable and you may be damaging a relationship rather than cementing it. Hey, thank you very much for your attention. I always appreciate how many people tune in to, uh, to catch my broadcast here. Uh, I'll be editing this up and put it on my YouTube uh, channel, and I'll put a notice up on Facebook. I'm also cross-posting to Instagram these days, so, so you're welcome to check it out there, too. I'll be back 2.30 Central Time next week with another video, and in that video, I'm going to talk about how to harvest your happies. Check it out if you think you'd be interested. As always, if I could be of help to you, don't hesitate to reach out. Take care and do well.